Hello and welcome to Lafroig Live 2010, coming to, from the, the heart of sherry and the Harvey's Bristol Cream Bodegas, which is the biggest selling sherry in the world, I might add, right here in Areth in the southwest corner of Spain. It's great to have you with us. Now, if we're talking about Lafroig whiskey, why are we in a sherry bodegas in Spain? Good point, and I'll come to that in just a second. Before that, I'm really excited because there are 2,000 barrels of slowly maturing sherry all around us, and the ones you see just here have got some very famous signatures on them, which is what I'm excited about. Princess Anne's signature back there, Deborah Kerr, Placido Domingo all back there, and many, many more. And right down here in front of us, we have one of the greatest golfers of all time, and I'm, I'm kind of... I need to stroke that there. Severiano Ballesteros down there. And we've also got Charlton Heston, he that played Moses. They are just some of the names on some of the barrels which are down here, which is really, really exciting. Now, it's been a warm but showery day here in Jerez today. Very, very humid. And outside in the courtyard, there are people who have literally travelled from right across the world just to be here. They're outside in the courtyard now, so let's say hello to them now. Hi, guys, give us a wave. Hello there, guys. Hello. Yeah, nice to see you out there. Great to see you. We're going to be popping out there to see them in a little while, tasting some food and having a chat to some of those people who've travelled so far away just to be here. Now, there are also a group of people up in Islay in Scotland, the home of Lafroyd Whiskey at the distillery. They're there right now. They've, by, by webcam, we can actually see them. They're, they're, they're out there. Give us a wave up there. Yes, they're up there. Bless them. Up there in Lafroy. And uh, we wish you uh, a happy evening and it will be slightly cooler than it is here, I'm guessing. Now, there are a live audience. That's you right around the world right now. Thousands of you. And you've joined us for the different uh, Lafroy TV shows that we've had. This is the fourth one. We were in London. Of course, we then went to uh, uh, Isla itself, to the distillery. Then we were in Kentucky at the Maker's Mark. And now, where are we? We're in Jerez. And we're talking about the relationship, if you like, between Lafroig and Sherry's. So all of that is to come. Now, if you are live online, you can, of course, send us your question. It's very easy to do so. There's a box at the bottom. All you've got to do is write your question and send it off to us. Remember to put your name and which country you're sending it from. That's really important because there is a competition and there are prizes for winners. So please send your question in. If you're tweeting, it's very simple. It's hashtag Lafroig. Send us your tweets. We'll try and get through them in the next 40 minutes or so. But boy, there is an awful lot to get through. Before before we do anything else, though, we are in the stunning town of Jerez in Andalusia, and I'm sure you'd like to see some of that beautiful Andalusian countryside. Enjoy. Well, I'm sure you enjoyed looking at that beautiful countryside of Andalusia. It's just a stunning place. Now, just over my shoulder here, you can see a little case with just one single glass in it. The current king of Spain, his grandfather, came here in 1904. And inside, there is one glass. That is the king's own glass. No, I'm not going to take it out. I thought about it for a moment, but best I don't. We don't have any royalty, but we do have the next best thing. In, we've got three great experts here who are going to teach us a great deal more about whiskies and sherry. So let's go and join them now and welcome, first of all, um, we've got Jose Antonio Suto, who's the general manager of Harvey's Bristol Cream. Thank you so much for being with us and thank you for <coughs> allowing us to use your fantastic bodega. Thank it's really a great place. You, you must get a great deal of pleasure out of a, a building like this. Yeah, thank you. It's great. Good to have you with us. We've also got with us, well, someone who's been with us for every one of our shows and he needs no introduction, but he deserves it all the less. Uh, John Campbell, the distillery manager for Lafroig. And so, John, nice to have you with us. Good evening, Mike. It's good to have you with us. Thank you once again for being there. And uh, this is a, a great place to be, John, isn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, I came here last year for the first time and it's just such an amazing place to be. And travelling an awful long way to be with us is uh, Simon Brooking, uh, Lafroig's brand ambassador. Uh, he was with us in Kentucky and you've popped up as well, so it's good to see you as well. well it's great to be here and uh, to represent all the good folks of the United States and Canada, North America. 
Well, there's, there's more of them outside. I met some earlier on, so it's great. <laughs> Plenty of you come across for this. It's a real celebration. Uh, let's go back to you, Jose, first of all, because I know we, we have got, uh, apart from the whiskies which we're going to be tasting, we have got uh, some, uh, uh, some sherries as well. Let's first of all start with um, a little bit about the relationship between Jerez and sherry itself. Wh wh why do they go together? Oh. Okay, uh, as you know, uh, sherry is produced here in Jerez, in the southwest in, uh, of Spain, and is protected uh, by the sherry of regulatory of the uh, denomination of uh, origin. Uh, wine has been produced here uh, for around 3,000 years, uh, so uh, has a very long history. Uh, the name Sherry came from uh, the Moorish name of the, of the town, Sherry's, and in Roman times uh, it was called Ceres. Uh, the main factor, the main Sherry, a uh, unique uh, wine, are the climatic and geological condition of this region, and also the vinification methods, and uh, finally the traditional uh, aging uh, method of the solera system. Mm -hmm. So that's why Jerez and Sherry, it's basically the same name that's changed over that time. John, there's a relationship between Sherry and Lefroy as well, which is really important, isn't it? Yeah, and it, it goes back to as soon as probably Lefroy started maturing spirit, uh, mid 1800s to early 1900s, Sherry casks would have been the cask mm -hmm. for maturation of that period. Uh, and today still a lot of the kind of higher end ones like the 25 year old we have here, the previous 30 year old and the newest brand which is triple would all have sherry influence so mm. it stays with Lefroy from start to finish I guess. Yeah, it does indeed and it's a strong link and Simon if I can come to you about this now, uh, you were with us in Kentucky last year, what do, you, what do you make of this place here because you were saying it's a great place to be but, but it, it, it's got such a sense of history hasn't it? It's a, a definitely, it's a, it's a wee bit older than Kentucky and, I, the, and <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, it, it's very interesting to see the, the uh, parallels between uh, the, uh, the, the two different regions, uh, the, the, the humidity of, of Kentucky versus the humidity of Isla versus the humidity of Heret uh, and, and obviously it, it has a, a big impact on uh, the way the whiskies are, are aged mm. uh, and it really brings out all the best uh, qualities of these spirits. Mm -hmm. It does indeed. We're going to start with some, some sherries which is unusual but we're going to have a, a very quick lesson if you like of some of the sherries and I know we've got three to taste Jose so if you want to start with the first one which one are we starting with? Uh, well before starting with the taste we, we can uh, talking about the classification of the sherry we can have the dry sherry that are produced uh, from the uh, Palomino grape and the sweet cherry that are produced from the uh, Pedro Ximenez grape. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, all the cherry are fortified with uh, wine alcohol. So the, the first uh, type is um, uh, Fino cherry. Uh, Fino cherry is fortified up to 15% uh, of alcohol and put into casks. Uh, where a field of this coal floor cover the surface of, of the wine, protecting the wine from the oxidation. So with this fino, it's a uh, harvest fino, it's, uh, we have a fino with a light and uh, pallid uh, color with uh, almond aroma, pungent and elegant because of the biological aging. Is uh, clean uh, in the mouth. Balance and round to the palate. Full body and with a long and lasting um, after tasting. Yeah, I think this is my favourite sherry as well. Uh, and it works really well with the kind of the, a lot of the local foods and it's, it's just good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just good. It's, it's just good. <laughs> oh, definitely a, a lighter style in comparison to a single malt whiskey, mm -hmm. but the climate dictates the style of the spirit. Yeah. And you know, with the warmer the warmer temperatures here in Spain compared to Scotland, um, you need something a little bit lighter. Uh, the fino goes well with salad, with seafood. Mm. Uh, you know, foods of the region definitely. What warmer than tropical Scotland? Surely not. <laughs> okay, that's that's our first one that we've tried down there. Let's okay. let's move straight on from the fino. What are we going up to next? Well, uh, the second is um, Oloroso, it's a harvest Oloroso. Oloroso is fortified up to 17% uh, of alcohol to prevent the formation of the floor and, uh, uh, and with uh, maturing in an oxidation atmosphere. So, 
So it's quite different. It's uh, with a strong bouquet, mm. but it's powerful with that deep and bright amber color. And with, with uh, uh, walnut uh, aroma. John, what do you yeah, make yeah, of really that? Get, just the walnuts really kind of, that struck a chord with me there, yeah. uh, definitely. And kind of this one, you do get a lot more of the, well, there's a lot more in common with Scotch whiskey as well, with the oxidization uh -huh. in, inside the cask. So it's the same, it's the same thing, but again, different climate, so different. Different variation. I can see you agreeing on that as well. Oh, definitely. Uh, with the, with the uh, addition of the yeast uh, yeah. creating the floor, you get more of the impact uh, on, on the spirit that way. Mm. This, you're getting more of the wood influence. Yeah. And that's why I think you get a real nice addition to the whiskies that are aged in the Oloroso casks. Mm. All right, well, we've got one left to try. And uh, so we'll move along to the Harvey's. It's the Harvey's Bristol Cream. This Harvey's Bristol Cream. Harvey's Bristol Cream is a blend of all the different the types of sherry. So com in combining the uh, character and body of the Oloroso and the aromas of the, of the Finos and Amontillado. And uh, sweetening with the PX variety of, uh, of sherry. So it's a freeze, mellow one uh, with that very long taste. The PX being Pedro Jimenez. Pedro Semenic, right? Yes, just to clarify. Yeah. And it's, there's, you get the, the real kind of syrupy, raisiny flavours coming through in this right. real that just gives it that body that kind of glues all the other sherries together. Yeah. Fantastic. Neat or on the rocks as a cocktail. Uh, yeah. can be served many different ways. It's a very versatile spirit. Fantastic. Fantastic. They, they, they all look great, and I'm, I know I'm going to try some of those later on. Uh, incidentally, if you're wondering why um, it's Bristol Cream, well, John Harvey, who started the company, he came from Bristol. It's as simple as that. There's yeah. no mystery to it all. Yeah. Let's now go to some fantastic uh, Lafroy that we've got. Now, we're, go we're going to be tasting the quarter cast, and we've got the quarter cast here. We've also got the triple wood, which is here, and then we've got something rather special, a 25-year-old, which I know John's going to be talking about a little bit later on. It's in the black box. So we'll talk about all of that in a moment. Uh, let's, let's first of all go. Who's going to start us off on quarter cast? It's going to be you, Simon, isn't it? I will, uh, I'll take you through the quarter cast tasting. Uh, what, what, why quarter cast? What does that mean? Well, uh, quarter cast is a... Uh, we're, we're innovating through history, uh, really through tradition, uh, because what we're doing is we're aging in 200-litre bourbon barrels the way we normally do, and then we put it into a smaller cask because it's 100 litres. And these are the kind of barrels that we use to bring the whiskey from the stills in the hills to market. So by putting it into the smaller cask, you get more of the wood influence on the whiskey. Mm -hmm. So uh, this really is a, a beautiful, uh, one of the newer additions, not one of the newest, uh, but certainly one of the newer additions and certainly has been embraced by the world, uh, or the, the friends of Lafroig everywhere. I like to call this one the wild child <laughs> uh, because it's a lively little whiskey, uh, younger whiskeys. Yeah. Um, so it really, you're getting it more towards the front. Um, and, and certainly this is where uh, all of you uh, can taste along with us now uh, with your quarter cask. So if you'd like to raise a glass and have a nose. A uh, lovely distinct characteristic of the isla, uh, the, the, the salt of the sea, as well as some sweet notes to it as yeah. well. This is a very approachable Lafroy. Mm. Um, for those that are, uh, are a little uh, hesitant about diving into the deep end of the Isla whiskies, uh, Lafroy Quarter Cask is a beautiful, uh, beautiful addition and a, and a great welcome to the Isla whiskies. So um, have, a, have a taste of that. And when you're tasting the whiskies, I will like, always like to recommend that you place the glass a little bit more towards the middle of the tongue. Because when you sip at the front of your mouth, all you're getting is the heat, mm. uh, as well as the sweet, because that's what you get in the front of the mouth. But by placing it in the middle of the tongue, you get more of the flavor, less of the heat, less of the burn. So, so you're still getting the smokiness, but you're not getting the burn. Exactly. Ah. A taste of that quarter cask, slanch. Okay. okay, we're getting questions coming in from all over the place, and uh, we're, thank you very much indeed for all of those. Uh, Ivana, uh, Ivana, it's Iveka. Iveka in Macedonia has just sent us a message to say hi, so hello, Macedonia. Among the many other countries, wherever you are watching this, we want to know where you are, what you're doing, how you're doing with your whiskey, and whether you're tasting it right now. John, just a, just a word on the quarter cast. Is it the wild child? I guess, yes. It's, it's how you, it's what you, it's, I can understand why you say that, because there's a lot of the, the oak influence here rather than the, the distillery mm. power. It's, it's our fastest rising brand, I can tell you that as well. Mm. It's been hugely, hugely popular since its incep inception six years ago. Uh, kind of the, the difference to the American oak, the, like the, it's two maturations of fresh American oak, so that gives you more of a kind of like a, a toffee caramel nose, some <laughs> Scottish drink, maybe UK drink, cream soda. I get a lot of that in this yeah. as well. And maybe good body, when you taste it, kind of like 
custard creamy, and then really spicy with these two batches of American oak. Finish is very dry though with that as well. Some good body, dry, and then really kind of zesty orange fruits at the end as well. Okay, so there's plenty in that there. Jose, for you, are you a, a, a whiskey drinker? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We are. And, and, and for that one for you? No, 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 it's, uh, I know it's fresh, it's uh, with a touch of the smoke, mm -hmm. salty, mm -hmm. marine. Yeah. Really nice. Excellent. I'm glad you like all of those. Uh, just got some greetings to get through, which I'm going to do very for you now. Uh, Julio is in Brazil and watching us right now. So hello, Brazil. Uh, we've also got Hans Joachim Kreiger, who's in Germany right now and watching us. Jürgen is in Amsterdam. Nancy Fraley in the US. Uh, Norman Schreider in Spain. And also Carter in Brooklyn as well. So you are quite global at the moment. So it's great to have you with us. Now, we're going to go to the next one, which is the triple wood. Um, I actually managed to have a cheeky little glass of that myself here as well, just in case, you know, because in case you run out. So, um, again, Simon, take us through the triple wood. Well, uh, what we've taken from the success of the, the uh, quarter cask, uh, and we've, uh, this is the union of three spirit worlds here. Uh, because certainly it is uh, the the uh, the whiskey from from Isla from Lafroig, and then aging in the American bourbon barrels, mm -hmm. and then uh, for uh, the 200 liter bourbon, and then into the smaller quarter cask, and then from there we put it for another period of time into uh, sherry casks. So it is a, a beautifully deep spirit uh, with with a, a sweetness to it. Uh, there's a dry sultana sweetness. Lovely, lovely nose to it, um, and uh, a, a great ad addition to the portfolio, the Lafroy portfolio. And uh, the word's been getting out. People are really excited about this whiskey. Triple wood for the three, the three worlds of sherry, bourbon, and of course single malt scotch. And if I might offer a toast, you may. All right, yeah. uh, and it goes something like this: Taluda, dinero y amor, el tiempo para conquista la todo. <laughs> Health, well wealth, and love, okay. and the time to conquer it all. Slander. Okay. I like that. I'll, dr I'll drink to that myself. Thank you very much. Oh. That is, that's quite some. We've got a question in, and we've got plenty of questions coming in at the moment. Um, are there different batches of triple wood from different years? Are they all the same, all the same bottling? So, yeah, John. Um, no, it's, it's the same recipe, uh, and we'll try and replicate this one the same every single time, so that you do get the three things that Simon's talked about there. You get, you get to, in the the glass you get to feel all of these three parts that come as a whole. <coughs> uh, you do kind of very much get a lot of kind of different flavoured fruits in this one that you don't normally associate with Lafroig in the triple wood. Uh, because it's our newest brand and it's only been available in duty free, hopefully next year we might manage to get that into some domestic markets, we're working that I guess. Uh, but there's some kind of apricot flavours in here that you normally don't get with Lafroig and I think that's just the kind of the mix of the European and American oak as well. Yeah. And, and if, I, uh, if I might add, I mean, I think uh, if, you, if you're not normally a, a, a sherry drinker, you should go out and buy a bottle and, and, and uh, have a taste just to see, you'll understand where that flavour comes from. Mm. It, it's, it's, it's so informative and I think it really, really helps you understand that sweetness. Also, I think if you're a wine drinker, it, it helps as well and because you're getting the influence of the grape yeah. in the ageing. Well, that's fantastic, yeah. isn't it? And, and, and of course, we're getting the grape in there, which, which obviously is pleasing you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's a very well balanced. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It is indeed. Uh, OK, we've got uh, hello to our first live broadcast. Uh, we're tuning in from Amsterdam with one of 600 bottles of triple wood. <laughs> looking forward to a live tasting. Good luck, which is a great message to get in. So the message is coming in. There's another question, Danny. I'm just going to go to you, John, straight away for uh, can I in the future get triple wood cask strength? And why not, <laughs> if not? <laughs> Good question, don't know. Uh, could you get it? I guess we, we could go to that if it was deemed appropriate. Uh, we thought taking it down to kind of 48% was the, the kind of normal thing we've done through. Mm. A lot of the feedback we get comes through Friends of Lafroy anyway. So yeah. if we get more feedback like this, I guess we'll just have to try it out. So if the friends dictate what the brand does, I would say. Okay. OK. Other people watching. Marcello, by the way, is watching at work. You should be working, but I'm glad you're watching. Thank you, Marcello. Uh, also, Mike is watching uh, in, at work at the moment in New Jersey. Good to have you. And Hans is in Sweden as well. There's Hans for you, Hans. Thank you very much indeed. Now, um, John, you're on with the next one, which is a, a special whisk, uh, uh, whiskey here, which is a 25-year-old. Just tell us a little bit more about it. OK, well, 25-year-old is a kind of, again, similar kind of, 
prospects to the, the triple wood and we have a mix of bourbon and uh, Oloroso sherry and also Fino sherry in here. So what we've just discussed there with Jose Antonio, you get a wee bit of everything in this one. So, mm. uh, 25 year old, cast strength. This is the 2009 edition we have here. It's 51% alcohol. It does change every year as well with the 2009, 2010, etc. Ver it's very limited this one as well, up to kind of four to 500 cases a year. So uh, we're extremely lucky to have some here. With this one here, with, with the mix of the three things I've just said, it's almost kind of like just a gentle crushed grape smell in this one, kind of heathery as well. And the distinctive kind of peat tang kicks mm. in at the back end as well. Mm. When we taste, on the palate, you do get the sherry straight away, which you, you didn't get overly in the nose. A real spicy apple in this one. And then the thing that really makes it Lefroy can be down the sides of the tongue, that real peaty licorice aftertaste on, if maybe better chocolate. Yeah, I, I'm glad you said the licorice there, because yeah. you, you do Real, that. That. Yeah. long and dry and peaty, the finish yeah. as well. Yeah. We always recommend trying the whiskey neat first, but then adding a drop of water to it. This is uh, this one's at 102 proof, uh, but really you get the influence of the aging in the whiskey now. It's not a big heavy style. Uh, it's it's softened, it's rounded out, it's mellowed, and certainly the sherry cask has added beautiful depth to it. Um, so it's there's not a lot of heat to it. It's just a, a beautiful, elegant spirit. Yeah. Uh, talk, let's talk about the, the water and whiskey issue because it's one that comes up every time we do one of these shows. And I think it's one you said it's important to try the whiskey without water and then try it with. It's almost like a different whiskey when you try it with water. It really does open it up, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it literally changes the molecular uh, structure of the spirit. It, it opens it up like wine. Uh, it reacts with air. And so uh, it's a much tighter spirit. By adding water to it, it opens it up and you get more of the flavors. Our, our master blenders, they sample 500 whiskeys a day. <laughs> now they're nosing them, they wouldn't make it to lunch if they're actually tasting, yeah. but when it comes time to taste, you actually, by add the water to it, you find the depth of the spirit that way. Mm. Okay, well, thank you for, for answering that. Well, I think people should try both and, yes. and, and see, yeah. see where they find their balance, because some people like it with Definitely. ice, some with water, some with a mixer even, yeah. dare I say. But, yeah, you know. one, one, of, one of the other tricks of uh, master blender Robert Hicks is he takes a sip of water in his mouth first and then the sip of the spirit so that you're not diluting straight away and you can find the balance a bit easier. That's a very good tip. And then very good tip. And then you still got your whiskey straight up yeah. on the side. Yeah. And again, on this 25-year-old, uh, Jose, if I may come down to you, sir. It's, it's very complex, but it's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just enjoying. He's a happy man it's down good, there. Yeah. There's happy people watching us as well. Ian is watching on his iPhone in Finchley in London. Good to have you on the iPhone. Uh, don't tilt us over too much. Uh, Norman's in Germany, Davies in Tor Toronto. Uh, we had a name from Sydney in Australia who said good day, we don't know who. Um, but uh, Ansi is watching in the middle of Finland. Uh, we've got uh, Tami in Israel. Uh, we've got um, Ganesh in Dubai. And we've got Dimitri in Lithuania. So countries all around the world are joining us as we speak. And it is really, really good to have you with us. Uh, we've, we've more or less tiptoed our way through all of these. Uh, is there another, there's another one that you've, you've been sneaking away there in the corner. What have you got there? <laughs> yep, uh, this is uh, it's just, as you can see, it's, it's not in a bottle yet. It's, uh, is that your medicine? That's, that's <laughs> Lefroy medicine, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, this, is, this is actually a cask sample taken straight from the cask. Uh, this is still at work, if you like, or still sleeping. And we've just kind of disturbed it for this live broadcast. This is a 30-year-old, fully uh, uh, sherry matured. Let me so empty far, my glass. Yeah. So far. Uh, it is still sleeping. Uh, it will be available for the bicentenary, which is in five years' time. So it will be a 35-year-old, fully matured uh, Lefroy and a Oloroso sherry cask. Just one cask as well. So this one's cask strength. Uh, if you look at the fantastic colour, it's almost as it is, it is as dark as the Oloroso and the, the Harvey's Bristol cream. Uh, and that's just the 30 years in the, the cask. With this one, now it is cask strength as well, so we're getting a lot of the, the alcohol coming through. But I would say this one kind of starts off kind of really chocolatey and then goes into fruit flavours, maybe plums and red apples coming through here. On the palate, huge presence 
in the mouth. Huge oaks, a lot of space oh. in the stairs that you weren't expecting. That was a Moving real surprise, that's fantastic. It becomes nice and salty too as well, which you don't always get with Oloroso's, but, and maybe that's just the stage it's at, because by the time we get to 2015, mm. no doubt it will have changed again. And we've just captured it at a snapshot in its history tonight. Uh, it does become very citrusy as well, as, as the, the aftertaste stays in your mouth. So, fantastic, fantastic uh, whiskey and an extra five years still to go. With Jose, just, just before I come to you, someone, Jose, you're just shaking your head. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah? <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> this is a uh, combination of the, uh, all the aromas of the Oloroso with the wood, uh, the very, very complex. Uh, mm -hmm. Incredible. Fantastic. Great. Simon? Well, with 2015 being the anniversary, the 200-year anniversary of Laphroaig, uh, it is a beautiful marriage of <laughs> sherry <laughs> and single malt scotch. Yes. Now, that's, that's, a, that's a wedding I want to go to. I can tell you. Let's, let's see if we've got questions coming in. Uh, the main difference between Isla peat and the peat from other places is what? What's the difference uh, the, in the, the peat? The quick answer to that is there's a moss in Isla called the sphagnum moss. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unique to Isla, and what it does, it adds the kind of medicinal type, iodine type flavours that you do get in Laphroaig. Uh, they used it for dressings and stuff like that. Uh, in times gone by, and you don't get that in kind of mainland peat. And the mainland peat is based on the old Caledonian forest, whereas it's decayed vegetation in Ireland. Ah, so it's a different peat it's altogether. It's different peat yeah, altogether, okay. yeah. Good. Uh, and that came in from uh, a vicar in Macedonia. Question in from Andreas. And uh, Andreas says, uh, for, modern mil uh, for modern malt whiskies, uh, how big is the influence uh, of the different types of casks on the final product? Uh, I guess I'll go for that one as well. Uh, it depends on where you start off. Uh, for some whiskies, uh, age is needed in casks because they're very light kind of spirits. For Laphroaig, it, it just depends. You can, you can, we've done from kind of younger whiskies in quarter cask to older whiskies, they're 30 year olds. It still stands up. As long as you, I think, as long as you can see the same DNA throughout each one, it's that's all that matters. As long as you see the DNA of that site. Also, I, I think um, the, the different types of barrels, uh, the bourbon casks, uh, you're not getting as heavy influence of the wood on on the spirit. Um, it's uh, sherry is a little harder to work with. It's a, it impacts the flavour of the whiskey a little mm. bit more. So um, it's a little more delicate. You have to um, uh, treat it uh, carefully because you can it, it can. It can turn the whiskey, but it's you know it's it's a, a different style versus you know bourbon versus sherry. Okay, one final question uh, because we are running out of time for questions. This one's from Carter, who's in Brooklyn, New York. What do you what do you look for in the perfect dram? What is the balance you look for? Well, I guess Simon has to answer I'll, that. I'll, that's say, that's, that's I'll, say, throwing, a, yeah. I'll say a big pour. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> short <laughs> measures. Yes. Uh, the perfect dram really it depends on the time the occasion, the location, it really is uh, because um, it, it, uh, the perfect dram is, is a very personal, um, personal experience. Yeah, and uh, so uh, what works one day and also the food that you've had during the day uh, will impact how it's going to taste on your palate. So really it is a, a balance between, uh, between the two and uh, you, you, find, you find the perfect dram for you. Go out and explore and find it on a daily basis, responsibly. Yeah, yeah. If there's something that makes Laphroaig different from a lot of other whiskies it is the fact that it is that flavour experience. Yeah. Yes. Well, guys, thank you for all your expert knowledge. Jose, thank you very much indeed for allowing thank us to right. come in here, take over your bodegas, and no for, uh, for, for giving us such a lesson in, in sherry as well. John, thank you very thank much indeed, distillery you. manager at Laphroaig, and it's always great to see you. And Simon as well, for your expert knowledge and for your travelling around the globe and your ambassadorial role, role for Laphroaig, thank you as well. Yes. Great to have all three of you with you. Now, as we said earlier on, we have friends who've travelled from all round the globe, and all they've done is come right here to be here. And I think it's high time because there's some food out there, there's a party going out there, and there's music out there from Diego Sandron as well. So I'm going to go and join them as well. We'll see you on the way outside. That's where we're going now. Now, here we are in the bodegas that goes back to 1730. 1730, imagine all that time here. We know this is an old bodega because when you look down at the floor, the floor here has huge big flagstones. Now these would have been in the center for one reason only, and that is to roll the barrels all the way down, which is what they do. Also you'll see these barrels that we got, some of the 2000 here are 
60 years old? Yeah, they're about 60 years old. That's about the lifespan of them. There are some barrels here that are 200 years old. And then, of course, there's the famous ones that have all been signed as well. So we have all that lot there as well. What you'll also notice is that it's like a cathedral in here. It's all big arches. The windows, well, there are no windows, but there are small apertures which are covered with... Um, pampas grass if you like and that has all been woven together and it allows the humidity of the winds of the sea to come straight through here and all bodegas in Hereth are built facing southwest. Down to the side of me not only have you got the flagstones but you've also got cobbles. The whole of Hereth is full of cobbles. There's a reason for those cobbles. When the boats came to pick up the sherry to take it back to Bristol, they needed to be ballasted so they didn't tip over on the way here when they were empty. And so they put stones in them. Those stones were emptied and that's where you find them now, throughout the streets of Hereth. What you'll also find is this soil. All this soil here, this mustard coloured soil, all of that soil there is there for one reason only, is just to make everything humid because they water it and they keep the humidity. Now here we are right at the side of the party and it's time to say hello to all of those friends of Lefroy. Hi guys! Whoa, what a great party! Fantastic! Don't you, you're all having a good time down here, I'm glad I've come down this way. Okay, I'm coming down to see you in just a second. It's great to see uh, our very good friend here, Diego. Good to see you. Ciao. Good to see you, Murray. You well? Playing away for us, bit of entertainment here. Yes, Just tell us, I mean, you've been playing music for an awfully long time now, haven't yes, you? Yes, yes, about 20 years. Wow. 20 years. That long? Yeah. And in that time, you've written quite a few great songs as well? Yes, I've composed for myself and other people. Mm -hmm. and I'm here at this great party for yeah. Lefroy. All the way from Venice as well? From Venice, yes. Now, tell me about you and Lefroy, because there's a special relationship with you and Lefroy, yes, isn't there? Yes, I, I, I buy a bunch of bottles and uh, age some wine in some old casks at my, in Venice, and Venetian wine, and then I uh, age the Lafroy in this cask for about a year and then re-bottle it and give it to the friends of Lafroy. So, so this, this, is a, this is the Venetian blend, if exactly. you like. Exactly. Just spread Venetian straight from here. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, all, you also uh, write songs. You've, you've, written one, you've written one really uh, about whiskey. Yeah? Yes, yes, I'm going to play a song about whiskey for you. That's later. great. We're going to have yeah. that in just a few minutes' time. It's great to see you here. Thanks for coming all the way from Venice. I'm glad the guitar made it as well. Yes. You've got a few drawings on there as yeah, well, that's huh? Right. My it's trips been, around the world. It's been decorated. There'll have to be one for Hereth as well. <laughs> right. All right, we'll talk to you in just a second. Thanks, uh, we've got to go and meet some of the guys here as well who are tucking in, as you can see, into some of this gorgeous food. Now, here we have, if I remember rightly, Cedric, who's from Toulouse. Uh, we've also got Alexandra, who is from Toronto. Montreal. 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 Oh, no, Toronto. <laughs> Montreal. Boy, is that an insult to you. <laughs> I hope it's not. Sorry about that, Alexandra. We've also got Miguel as well. Miguel, good to have you with us. Thank you very much indeed for being there. Uh, enjoying it? You're in your hometown, is that right? Yes. Yeah, it was good. And so uh, you've got food in front of you. Uh, and we've also got... Cheryl sitting on the corner there. Very good to see you as well. Okay, let's let's talk about some of the food that we've got here to start off with. Um, now that looks like me octopus and paprika. Um, so the octopus and the paprika we've got there. Um, I'm guessing that will. Uh, I mean, that's typically Spanish. Yes, it is called pulpo a la gallega. Uh -huh. And and spicy. No, no, it's fine. No, it's fine for you. Good for you as well, madame? It's very good. Uh -huh. Are you an octopus eater normally? I am. Oh, well, I thank heavens octopus. for that. Yes. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Now, one of the marriages that they're suggesting for us would be between the octopus and between the quarter cask, which is uh, the frog there. I don't know if you've tried them yet. Yes. Now, what do you make of that? I prefer this one to this one, uh -huh. actually. And, and what about the quarter cask in, in, in oh, terms with I haven't with tried the... both together. Ah, yes. you made, made me try both of those together. <laughs> Cedric, as a Frenchman, uh, is whiskey something new to you? Uh, no, no, no. No, no. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's something you've known for quite a long time, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, wine, uh, too. But uh -huh. uh, I bought my first bottle... Uh, Three years ago, and now I'm here. It's uh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> here you are, bang front centre. You've got some great dishes down here as well. The other dish there, I, I've, I've got a feeling, is is cheek, which is uh, which is cooked very very softly, very finely there, uh, with some cured ham. Um, and it, an, in, an interesting taste. Very interesting. Yeah. Very very tender. Uh, yeah, very softly cooked as well, huh? So you get dinner, you get great great ones. Now you said earlier on you preferred the the uh, the triple rather than the quarter cask. 
No, the quarter cast. Quarter cast you yes. prefer rather than the triple? It ah. goes down easier. Is I that find. right? Okay. And for you, Cedric, what's, what's the vote for you? Uh, for me, too. Is the first yeah, one. the quarter cast, I can yeah. see it's almost gone there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's out of the way completely. I'm going to come over and say hi to Cheryl as well. Cheryl, um, in, ter in terms of the uh, uh, the food down here, is this, is this to your liking? Yeah, I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. Really, really nice. You are going to save me some of that, aren't you? <laughs> A bit left, maybe. Yeah, okay, <laughs> fine. And there's some dessert. There's a lovely chocolate brandy dessert there, which I know is going to go well, I think, with the, with the Harvey's Bristol cream as well. So so that's it's great. The tables go back even further. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. And uh, please in, please keep enjoying what you're doing down there whilst we move back to our next table down here. Whole collection of... Um, would it be fair to say expats, or would that be a rude thing to say to you? Would be... It's a very rude thing. I won't say that then, in other case. <laughs> How are we, madam? Are we all right? You knew I was going to come and pick I, on you, I didn't know. you? Oh, yes, yes, I'm fully aware. No, we're, we're absolutely fine. We're having a wonderful evening. Good. I'm very pleased to hear it. Um, and and uh, food-wise, so far, it's, um, it's taken... You've only just started, I know. We have. The octopus is lovely. I haven't actually tackled this one yet, but I'm sure it'll be wonderful. I know Sir has on this side here. Yeah, very tasty. Yeah, very delicious. Good. Yes. Good. Well, so, I was hearing what you were saying earlier, and definitely the, doesn't, you don't notice it's a cheaper cut of meat. Well, cheaper maybe, but it's the cheek, you see, yeah. so that's what it is. Yeah. So it's nice and tender. It has to be cooked very, very slowly. And, of course, you've got dessert already there as well, for you as well. So loads of desserts down here. Everyone seems to be having a really, really good time. Everyone good at the back? You're okay down there? Yeah. Oh, they're just enjoying themselves. You carry on enjoying yourself. Great to see you guys. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and uh, hopefully there'll be some food left for me in just a little while. So, Diego, you are going to play us out. What's the song you're going to play us? It's called I Do. I Do. And it's a bad whiskey. Diego is going to play us out um, from everyone here in Jerez on a very, very warm evening. I'm sorry we didn't get through all of those questions. There will be two winners picked out. Those two winners will be notified by email. So if you are one of those winners, congratulations to you. To everyone else who's been joining us around the world, thank you so much. To all of our experts as well. And from everyone down here, I think we should, in the traditional way, raise a glass and say, from everyone here in Jerez, Adios! Over with you, Diego. She lived in the city She lived for the pretty Good chance that one day I'll go by With the blessing of a gypsy a bottle of whiskey I soon found my way to her house And as I made her mine I felt it all around The scent of all the lovers of all time Though I'm broken down, fall into my arms and be one thought away from here. So, darling, right or wrong, walk into my song and I'll spend the rest of time. With you, I do, I do. I do, I do. I do, I do. I do. I do.